Hi, my name is Francisco and welcome to this video series about marketing research. And in this first video, I want to talk to you about descriptive research designs. We're going to discuss the characteristics of descriptive studies, some of the most used methods, some applications in marketing, and in the end, some pros and cons. So first of all, let's start with the characteristics of um, descriptive studies. And the main characteristics of descriptive studies, as the name sort of suggests, is to describe a particular phenomena. We want to have a general overview about how consumers think and how consumers behave in relation to a brand, a company, a service, an experience. So we want to know, broadly speaking, how do consumers feel? How do consumers uh, uh, um, perceive a certain brand? What is their level of satisfaction with a service that is delivered? Um, so we want to know this general overview. So a second characteristic is if we want to have a general overview, we aim to generalize the results. We want in the end to be able to say, generally speaking, this is what consumers, uh, this is how consumers think. It's for example, when you have an election and you choose a small sample from the population, because we want to know generally speaking, how do they feel about those candidates um, or which one are they going to vote on? It's exactly the same thing. If we have, let's say, a music festival and assume, imagine that many different brands did different brand activations in the festival. And then afterwards, we want to know how do they feel about these brand activations? How much do they recall from these brand activations? And therefore, another characteristic is we have to work with large sample sizes. Um, you cannot do a descriptive study with a small sample size. So um, if you want to have this general overview, obviously you cannot address everyone in the population of a study, but you should be aiming for a large sample size. So you, in the end, you can generalize these results and say, gen broadly speaking, this is how consumers feel about a particular brand or about a particular company. And also, descriptive studies, um, they generate pretty much only quantitative uh, data. So in the end, you're gonna be working with numbers and running different sort of statistical tests. So now let's talk about the methods. All right, so if we want to get this general overview about any sort of phenomena, how consumers think or how consumers behave, how do we do that? The two most common methods in marketing, first of all, is structured survey. And I wanna make it really clear here, structured, because you have predefined questions and predefined uh, answers, yeah? So those traditional structured questionnaires that I'm pretty sure that you've answered some of them already. So you have those predefined questions and predefined answers that normally they come either as multiple choices for things for you to choose or liquor type scales. For example, how are you satisfied with a certain brand and ranging from one not at all satisfied to five or 10 or 100 to very satisfied? Um, if you saw a commercial on TV and they wanna know how much you, re you recollect from this commercial, how much do you recollect from the product that was mentioned from one not at all recollect to uh, five or 10 or 100 fully recollect um, uh, the message? So the first type is structured uh, survey which in the, in the past used to be done by telephone, and many companies would call people with the questionnaire and go through the questions. Um, they would do also by mail, you can also do this in person, but obviously in the last years, most of it is done online. So you have a number of different um, companies that allow you to do this for free, companies such as uh, uh, quicksurveys.com or SurveyMonkey. Of course, they have a free version, a limited free version. If you want more uh, tools and, and details, um, more options, um, they obviously need to pay a little bit for that. Um, but yeah, you have a number of different tools available online. Just one quick suggestion in case you need to use some of those, try to choose the ones where you can download the raw Excel sheet because um, usually all of these platforms, they will give you some descriptive statistics. So they're gonna give you some averages, some, uh, uh, some frequencies, some means, some averages. Um, but if you wanna do any more advanced testing, you need to be able to download the raw data set. So make sure you check for that. And also, uh, if you want to know how to develop um, a good structured online survey questionnaire, this is a little bit too long to explain in this video, but there's a next one in this series. Just follow up and I'll show you in very fine detail how you can um, create a great structured survey questionnaire. 
Second very common uh, method for descriptive studies are observations, uh, structured observations. So in structured observations, usually researchers, they have predefined uh, categories that they're looking for. Um, and then they analyze the behaviors of people and every time people behave in a particular way or when, when uh, um, uh, participants have certain characteristics, then they'll simply tick on those categories. So let me give you an example. Um, in supermarkets, so I usually tell my students that when you go into a supermarket, you, you have these signs that will tell you, uh, smile, you're being watched. That's not just to see if people are stealing, that's also for observational studies. For example, if you have senior consumers, um, they should all of their products should be of easy reach because if a senior consumer is trying to pick up a product which is too high up in the shelf, that can be dangerous or he or she can fall or uh, the product can fall on them and obviously that's not a good thing. The same applies for children. So in observational studies, you can see, uh, in, for, let's say that you have a category for, for a risk and uh, when a consumer picks up a certain type of product and then you can mark that and then you can know which type of product or in which alley or which number of senior consumers went through that alley and exposed themselves to that, to that potential danger. Another example would be uh, for crowd management. So for crowd management, there are lots of different observational studies are, are done. So if you have a music festival, and then you have different stages. Once a band ends, where's, where's the crowd going to? How many people go into direction A? How many people go into direction B? The ones that go into direction A, what are the things that they're doing? These are all things that you can measure in observational studies. Another form of observational studies is content analysis, uh, which is a bit too complex for me to explain here briefly in this video, but you can look up more on it. But it's basically a systematic way in which you can um, quantify non-numerical objects of investigation like commercials, music. Um, I did in the past uh, um, a study on websites, so you have predefined categories like where is the menu placed, where is the search engine box uh, placed, different types of icons, um, different types of banners, positioning of banners, uh, use of colors, and all of these become categories. Every time you look at a website, you start um, ticking, marking those things. So um, yeah, so content analysis is a form of, a, um, of observational studies, but you, um, this is a bit more complicated. But uh, you can have a look on it, and I would suggest looking for an author called Kassarjian. Um, he's one of the main ones that have written in um, content analysis. Yeah, and other applications in marketing, there are multiple ones. Uh, personally, I think that descriptive studies is something that all companies, it doesn't matter what they are, they should be doing um, descriptive studies permanently to see what people think about their brands, about their services, about the experiences that they provide, also with uh, competitors, yeah, so you can do a cross comparison to see this broad overview of what consumers think of your brand and your product compared to, uh, uh, compared to competitors. And there are many different types of measurements that are done in marketing, like uh, brand attitude, brand recognition, satisfaction, which is by far the most evaluated uh, concept in descriptive studies, service quality, risk perception, purchasing tension, visual appeal of products. These are all factors that can be measured in descriptive studies. And to finish up, some pros and cons. The pros of descriptive studies is that it's fast uh, to do, it's fast to set up, it's fast to collect data, and, um, and will allow managers to be able to have this overview. And when you have multiple data collection periods, when you have longitudinal data collection, you can even see the overall pattern of uh, consumers' perceptions and behaviors. So if you're doing descriptive studies, and if possible, I would definitely suggest to do longitudinal studies so you can have multiple points of data collection. Negative side of it is that although you have this, uh, this general overview, you don't know in depth what consumers think. So if you do multiple measurements of service quality, and you see that in the winter you have a lower service quality compared to in the summer, why is that? The descriptive studies will not tell you this. this for this you need a different type of uh, research design, which is exploratory study. So um, in descriptive studies, you won't, ask, you won't answer these questions of why, why certain things happen. You get this general overview, which is very important, but you won't know the reasons why, and you also don't know cause and effect relationships. What, what is causing uh, 
uh, consumers to have this particular opinion. So again, as I mention a lot to my students, descriptive study is very much like you taking your temperature. If you take a temperature with a thermometer, you will know that you have 36. Why do you have 36? The thermometer will not tell you, but it's still really important to measure what your temperature is. So yeah, so on a nutshell, this is what descriptive studies are about. Don't forget to discuss it in details with uh, the professor to which you're taking the marketing research class. Uh, there's a different number of uh, marketing research books in the description here. I'm going to link also an article where you can find lots of different marketing research books that hopefully are going to be helpful for you. Hope you enjoy. If, if you feel so inclined, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, all the absolute best. Take care and bye-bye.